Spotlight for everyone. All right, go ahead and unmute yourself. That's for you, Ariel, because I'm. Oh, looks like you're unmuted. Okay. I don't know how I got muted. You're good. You're good. All right. Yeah. Thanks, everybody, for being here. So let me go live on Instagram as well. And adjust something real quick. Okay. All right. So thanks, everybody, for being here. My name is Ariel. There is a donation link in the chat. And this, the donations are for a friend of mine who's also a yoga student of mine who's been on retreats. She's younger than me and she's dealing with a really devastating uh, late stage breast cancer diagnosis. The other thing is her sister has been dealing with ALS and um, it's just sort of like for her family, a whole storm of events. So if you feel moved, please, donate to the link. Um, it's a GoFundMe site and you can find out more by clicking there. So um, let me adjust one more thing. <laughs> Sorry for all the adjustments. Just trying to make everything as optimal as I can. All right. So my name is Arielle and I am a physical therapist and I've also taught yoga for 20 years. This is a class that I, I got the idea because I have a YouTube channel and um, that YouTube channel, the most like popular class on there is called Thoracic Spine Awakening. And I taught this about five years ago. And at that time I was really working passive extension into the upper back. So there was a lot of strengthening as well, but it was more of a passive and more of like an extension based class, meaning back bends concentrated in the upper back. And as I am a physical therapist, I've been a physical therapist for 10 years. I work one on one with a lot of clients. And what I'm finding with a lot of yoga folks is that we actually don't need more thoracic extension. What we need is thoracic strength and good mobility. And it sounds a little strange, right? That we need mobility in our rib cage, but we do, we really, really do. And I'm gonna teach you all about that. So for this practice today, please have a block and a blanket. I like to keep it pretty minimal. If you don't have a blanket, you can use a towel or some throw pillows or something like that. And a couple other things to know. I live in Washington, DC. I run a clinic here. I see clients on telehealth. I also three times a week, three days a week, teach yoga and strength classes. So Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, I teach yep. core hips happy hour on Fridays, which is a strength-based hip practice. And on Wednesdays, I actually teach weightlifting for yogis for 20 minutes. And you just using the weights that you have in your house, hopefully. And then I also teach um, a mobility fashion function. I'm known for teaching fascia and incorporating fascia into my yoga stuff. So that's a little bit about me. That's about the donation link and that's about this class, okay? If you are not muted, definitely mute yourself for this, um, for the Zoom call. And we're gonna rock and roll. And for those who are joining on Instagram, I'm doing my best to give you as much of a view as I can. Okay, so let's start with uh, meditation. This class is gonna involve a lot of atypical yoga stuff. So it's very um, influenced by my physical therapy practice, but we're gonna start and close in the centering and Shavasana way. Find a comfortable seat. Notice your breath. And then one of your next few exhales, allow your eyes to close. 
If you feel more comfortable, you can keep your gaze on the floor in front of you. And we'll tune our awareness inwards. Paying attention to expansion of the rib cage, expansion of the belly, Inviting the breath to be easy in and out through the nose. So we're going to place one hand over the chest, palms down, and the other hand on the side of your ribs. And I invite you to notice which one moves the most. And then to switch it up. So make sure you get the other side of your ribs. You do want to inspire a little bit of movement underneath your hands here. So if you're not used to breathing this high up into your chest, just play with that idea. And we're going to take both hands to the sides of the ribs and at the top of your inhale. Take a little extra breath, again, in through the nose if possible. And then one more extra breath, really filling. See if you can do this without sticking your rib cage out, just keeping it just where it was. And then all air out. Release your arms, crack open your eyes, allow your shoulders to roll a little bit. And Today, we are gonna start with our blanket or towel roll. If you have a bolster, you might wanna use your yoga bolster for this, but we're basically gonna roll up a blanket if you have a pretty typical wool blanket from the yoga studio style blanket, and just go belly down right over this. So my forehead is off, my head is off the top of the blanket, you can go that way, uh, which would be vertical in line with your body, or you can bring it horizontal. So whatever feels best, most appropriate for you. This is going to force some of your breath into the back of your body. I know most of us do not have a bolster at home. If you happen to have a bolster, you can do the same thing with a bolster, and it's just a little bit more comfortable. And if you don't have any of the above, just lay flat on the floor. And the idea is that we're sending the breath into the back body. We'll be here for at least five more breaths. I encourage you to breathe into this space where the low thoracic meets your lumbar region and also to breathe into the space at the very top of your thoracic spine. Steady inhale and exhale through the nose. When you're ready, you're going to bring your hands by your sides. Rise up from here. And for this next move, it's absolutely a little bit better to have some kind of towel roll or blanket. So you're going to roll it up, nice big roll. And then lay over, like place that over the, under the middle of your ribs as you lay on your side. So something like this, yeah? And you want to make sure you're not twisted or anything like that. If it feels good, you can draw your knees towards your chest. 
there should be an almost an opening, a flaring of the top ribs at the upper part of your rib cage here. And just a few steady inhales and exhales through the nose. We start off slow, but we'll get a little fiery later on in practice. Gently bring your arm by your ear if that feels good. This is your top arm. And then if you wish, now we're gonna start to rock back a little bit. And it's this is not about feeling a big stretch. You might feel a big stretch, but it's about breathing into these ribs under your armpit. All right, hopefully you found some interesting spots there. We're gonna take it over to the other side. So place the apex of your roll right under the middle of your ribs. Draw your knees up if that feels good for you. And you have the option to bring your top arm by your ear here. So this first little bit is just breathing into the opening of the top ribs. With the compression at the bottom, it kind of forces the air into a different part of your rib cage than you might be used to using. And the ribs themselves have, each of them have a little bit of movement to them. So we just don't tend to think of that very much. But if you go to learn CPR, you learn that you can compress someone's chest like a third of the way, right? And usually, sometimes they do, but usually ribs don't break. It's amazing. And so we can do that for ourselves and keep that pliability here, which can help with lung capacity, shoulder pain, neck pain, and low back pain. Top arm is gonna slide back a little bit into just a little bit of rotation or spinal twist in the upper back. And take a few breaths here, thinking about breathing into your armpit almost, right? The upper, upper ribs. Beautiful. We're gonna do one more thing with the blanket and this one really does involve the blanket being a little bit longer. So not quite as fruitful with a towel roll, but you're gonna take this blanket and make it lengthwise, lengthwise behind you. And you may even want to actually sit on the blanket. So I'm gonna sit on mine. And then at the back, head is gonna be off. Arms are gonna be open, but I'm not trying to get into a really big back bend or I'm trying to take the two sides of my rib cage and almost like open the front. So the way I'm gonna concentrate that a little bit is I'm gonna slide this block underneath my butt here and then draw my knees towards the chest. This will lock out my low back from going into a back bend. And with the arms out in this uh, cactus shape, I've got a nice expansive quality of breath across the upper chest. So it's pretty wild, a wild thing that's about to come out of my mouth, but the, um, a lot of yogis over breathe with their diaphragm. For years and years, I learned that the respiratory diaphragm, which is the muscle at the base of your ribs, was like how we should all be breathing. And I think what happens is that if you, if you really take that to heart, you end up not breathing with your upper chest, your upper back, any of that. And that's just silly. So full breath, soft jaw, lots of spaciousness here. Let's lower the feet. 
lift the hips, slide the block out of the way, and then go ahead and roll to your side and make your way up. Set your blanket off to the side and please come into onto your belly. From here, float your chest, float your arms, and just go ahead and slide one arm forward and back, and then the other arm forward and back. Keep your neck as part of the, the extension of your spine. So the back of the neck is long, chin is tucked a little bit, chest is moving forward, even as the arms kind of pull back and forth. Take a full breath here. If you feel a lot of strain, especially in your lower back, I'm gonna give you a couple of tips. One is to squeeze your glutes. Two is to pull the chest forward more. And three, just don't go up so high. Last couple of little swims here. Good. And then make your way onto hands and knees. If you prefer to be on your forearms, you can be on your forearms. Go ahead and round your spine. And we're gonna stay in this cat shape, which is appropriate for this weekend, cat on Halloween shape. And just breathe into the upper back. Head stays heavy, jaw relaxed. Aim to expand the space between your rib cage between your ribs and the back. And then let's go ahead and move through. So dropping the belly down, pull the chest forward. And don't worry about how much of a back bend you get. Try to just actively make this happen. Round it up. And go ahead and belly down, heart forward. Round it up. And belly down. Heart forward. We're going to do one more of these and then experiment with how much of it really is coming from our thoracic region and how much of it's coming from our low back or somewhere else. When you're ready, come down into your belly, come into Sphinx pose. And for this Sphinx, we're going to have our elbows a little bit wider apart. So um, taking a little bit of a, a break from the rounding and, um, and arching, Go ahead and look over one shoulder and then look over the other. Moving back and forth, getting the scapular stability. I really consider when I'm teaching anything for the thoracic spine, I'm always looking at the shoulder girdle. So basically your shoulder blades, your collarbones, this whole circle of the upper, upper ribs and the shoulder girdle are really, really intertwined. Keep driving it down. And then come back to center. You're going to try to round without lifting your pelvis off the floor. So keep the pelvis down. Drive the elbows into the floor, round the back. Maybe take a breath here. And then pull the chest forward. Round the back, breath or two. And one of the simplest things you can do for thoracic spine health and rib cage health is not always breathing in when you back bend and exhaling when you round. You want to also round your back and be able to inhale at that into that back body space. So the last one or two of these. And then rise right back up to hands and knees. Um, make your toes touch, rock back towards your heels. If you need any kind of modification for your knees here, feel free to have your blanket under your knees, between your thighs and your calves. Feel free to also have your block under your hips, right? So lots of options. I'm gonna come down onto my right forearm and bring the left hand behind the head. Drop down and tap your elbow down to the ground. This is your left elbow. And then try to look up underneath that elbow. 
move with breath. And that might be an inhale on the way down or an inhale on the way up. Try both. Got one more side. So as you're ready, lower down and shake it out. And let's go ahead and switch sides. Right hand to the back of the head. Left forearm is on the ground and it doesn't have to be at any particular angle. You can just find out what feels good. If you, by the way, are not moving very much with this, that's kind of normal. This is not about like some big fancy twist. Um, we have locked out basically the lower thoracic and the lumbar. And so we're really only being able to move from the mid back up. Most of the rotation in the spine comes from our neck. And the second most um, rotation comes from the thoracic spine, but specifically from the upper part of the thoracic spine. So we've got a couple more of these. I call these sprinklers. Last one. And then come on down, interlace your fingers, just lean forward, round, take a nice full breath in between the shoulder blades. Good, and then come right back onto hands and actually come into a seated position. So you can still have your block uh, maybe between your heels now. And you're gonna cross your arms over your chest. We're gonna borrow something from a technique called functional range conditioning. So make sure that your sitting bones are even on the ground, pelvis is level. You're gonna take a big exhale, all air out of the body sort of draw your lowest ribs down and in. From here, take a little bit of an inhale and then turn as far as you can to one side. Lift your elbows a little bit. Try to create some tension and then turn. You're still extended over to the other side and come on down. Starting point. Ribs stay right over the pelvis. Your neck doesn't do a lot of this movement. It's mostly gonna be your upper back that's moving. Big exhale, lock the ribs down, and then start to inhale just the tiniest bit. Move, find your back bend, over and down. This is your introduction to pure thoracic movement in a way. Not your neck, not your low back. If you wanna be even more certain that it's not your low back, place one of your feet in front of you. So this will again, lock out your low back. We're gonna do one more in each direction and we're gonna break down just a little bit more. So first, just exhale and turn to one side. Notice how far you can go. Not very far, right? And then exhale and turn to the other side. My hope is that these two right and left will be pretty even for you. And then coming back through to center, you're gonna lift, go across. This is your, your little back bend down and then draw the circle in the other way. It's like you're drawing a little circle with your elbows. Any part of that felt stiff, that's a good time, that's a good position to maybe consider holding and just breathing into it, right? So if you found a, a position that felt a little stiff. So speaking of the rotation in our backs, I wanna take you back to the floor and you just need a little bit of space on either side of you because we're gonna do a gentle twist. Please have your feet as wide as your yoga mat or a yoga mat, and then lay down onto your back. Arms are gonna go um, actually not in any fancy position. You're gonna have your hands on your lowest ribs 
And so the first thing that I want you to notice is how intimately your low ribs uh, are with the floor. Sometimes in the world of yoga, I see people whose lowest ribs can't even touch the floor, even though their knees are bent and the feet are flat. So number one, just kind of pay attention to where your rib cage is in relation to the floor. And my hope is that the right and the left sides feel both feel equally connected. And if not, that's okay too. If people have scoliosis, it's a thing. I, I would say more people have it than know it. So just know that it's okay to be a little bit asymmetrical, but try your best to stick to your root symmetry, right? Like however much you've got right now. So the feet are gonna come in, you're gonna keep your rib cage down to the floor and you're gonna sweep your knees to the right and to the left. And notice if your rib cage moves more with one versus the other. Some of you might be wondering right now what's going on because I have, um, I have said that the rotation in the back is predominantly from the rib cage and the neck. So how are the, how is my lower half rotating so much right now? 90% of this movement, at least 80% of this movement is coming from the hip joints, which are, as you know, highly, highly mobile. And then a little bit is coming from the low back. We've got about 15 degrees of rotation there. And you can feel that the pelvis isn't really off the floor all that much on most of us. If there's one side that you go to, where the rib cage seems to wanna to pop up a lot more, then I invite you to put your hands there and just take a few waves over to that side. After you've kind of warmed it up, taken a few waves over to that side, you're gonna get into position to hold it and breathe. That's it. Do you come back through to center, draw your knees into your chest, rock a little side to side. Feel free to um, take a spinal twist here. I'll talk you through how to make a spinal twist really thoracic in nature. So knees stay close to the chest and you're gonna keep them up. This is the tricky part. Let them drop over, use your block as much as you need or your blanket as much as you need here. And then allow this other arm to be in a field pose shape. So this is gonna be really helpful for getting into the chest, the upper back, the rib cage. A couple of breaths, again, feels like it's in the upper 30% of the ribs. On that left side, if your knees move to the right. And we'll bring the chin back to center and block over to the other side. Lower your knees to the other side, opening out, find the field pose shape. And take a few breaths here as well. With my top hand, the hand that's touching the legs right now, I just want you to know I'm not pulling, I'm not forcing. In fact, I'm gonna even take my block from the lowest position to the middle position because that just feels more like a natural end point for my body right now. And that gives me more freedom to focus here and breathe into the upper chest on the right. Unwind. Set your block off to the side. Come onto hands and knees. And let's go back into the rounding action that we were doing before. So I always like to have my toes curled under. Toe mobility is a big thing. Round, breathe into the upper back. Notice if you feel any more free than you did before. Okay, we're gonna come back to that. But for now, sit on your block again. Any sitting position is fine. And you're going to um, take your hands, kind of loosely interlace your fingers at the very base of your neck. So it's basically you're going to have your hands on your upper back. I'm going to turn around to show you. So you could even get onto the skin 
like right in here in the upper um, couple of thoracic vertebrae, right? So I'm loosely interlacing and I'm sort of pulling up to help free it up a little bit. And the idea is that from here, as you slowly drop your chin down, you're gonna have a little bit more freedom in your upper back, breathing there. And then you can also do the opposite, lifting, separating your elbows, try to get your upper upper back to assist your neck in looking back. Keep up those two motions and I'll explain a little bit more. So for folks who have neck pain, shoulder pain, upper limb pain of any sort, who come to see me in my clinic, I'm all, almost always gonna look at cervical range of motion. And very often people have pain or limitation dropping their chin to their chest or looking up and back, right? That can be a thing. And so part of that usually is because one part of your neck is wiggling more than the rest, right? And then that becomes the stopping point or the pain point, et cetera. But when we can get our thoracic spine to move appropriately with us to help a little bit with extension of the neck, and to help gently with the flexion of the neck, good things can happen. You can almost think of these as like a little fan opening, or um, I, I just got this visual of the little spikes on the back of an iguana, right? Like waking up, I don't know where that came from in my mind as I haven't seen an iguana in a long time. But yeah, deep breath, upper back, and then deep breath into the upper upper chest. And we're gonna to add to this just a little bit, okay? So please take your right hand over and across to that left um, area where the shoulder and the neck meet. Hook onto the skin of the upper back again. And just very gently reach your opposite arm over, okay? So left arm across. Right arm is assisting in the sense that it's helping to create a little bit of rotation. Bring it back to center and then take it to the other side. So hook onto the upper, upper part of your back and then left arm reaches across and back. Right arm reaches across and back. <laughs> Moving a little quickly, feel free to go more slowly. Left, uh, right arm reaches across. I mixed it up a bit. And back. One more time each side. Coming back through to center. Stay like this if this is the best option for you. If you feel comfortable, please do put your feet flat to the floor here. And we're going to bring our arms into field post shape. You can even do this in a chair, so it doesn't really matter how you're sitting, but if your knees are in front of you, your lower back is not gonna be able to rotate as much, so it will kind of concentrate the forces in your upper back. Feel post shape or hands to the back of the head. Go ahead and just turn as far as you can to one side. In my head, I always think I'm gonna turn like a, a solid 45 degrees to 90 degrees. And in reality, when we really, look at how much just the upper back moves. You can see that it moves a good amount, but not nearly what we get when we add our binds and our twists. Earlier, I talked about the difference between, uh, very briefly about the difference between passive and active movement. And this is that. So passive movement is me leveraging some other body part or gravity or, or whatever to move further than my own muscles can take that joint. And it's confusing, let's face it, because it feels like I'm being very active right now to go into this twist. I'm using a lot of force, but that force is not coming from the part of my body that's doing the movement. So hands to the back of the head again, if you took yours off like me, and just experiment with how far you can go in the other direction. Now this I've been teaching for many, many years this like active thoracic rotation. 
noticing where you can breathe easily within these twists, what feels a little stiff, and then come on down from here. Anybody who has shoulder pain, neck pain, um, even low back pain, I really encourage you to do some of these exercises, to do the ones that you feel might, um, might have the biggest difference right to left and experiment with those. And we're gonna do some general upper back strengthening now. So my, one of my favorite subjects, um, come on to hands and knees. And then with your weight shifted over your left hand, Go ahead and bring your right arm by your side. You're gonna first glue your shoulder blade down onto your back. Palm is gonna to face towards the floor. We're gonna do little tiny movements here. So arm floats and lowers. Elbow is super straight this whole time. Lower down. Shake it out and let's take it to the other side. So it is just a tiny little movement initiated from the shoulder blade. And you'll notice that I'm not actually coming all the way down to the floor, which we will do with some of the other movements. Beautiful. So back to the first side, <laughs> moving back and forth so you guys have a, a good visual. You're gonna bring your arm straight out to the side. So if it's your right arm, bring it straight out to the side. Palms can be down or palm can be forward. And you're gonna lift either from the thumb side or the back of the hand. Again, initiating this movement from your shoulder blade. Go ahead and tap it all the way down if that feels comfortable to you and all the way up. This is a really powerful movement that personally I can start to feel some fatigue around 10. And I think it's really important to simply, you know, notice if you feel more fatigue on one side versus the other, or if you feel fatigue a lot earlier than 10. And the build up the strength. So again, arm goes straight out to the side, palm forward or down. And we're gonna lift and lower. If this is just a lot on your shoulder for any reason, it might be useful to bring your arm into the field post shape here. That takes a little bit of the lever arm out of it. And last one or two. Go ahead and lower down and then come onto your forearms. So we're gonna curl interlace fingers together. I like to curl the toes under again. And then round your spine and pretend that you're in um, Pincha Mayarasana, which is the forearm balance position. So your head will be off the floor. Your upper arms are driving down into the floor. That means your shoulder blades have to protract around the sides of your ribs. And they also have to elevate to keep your head from touching the floor. If you feel comfortable here, if, if this is a lot for your shoulders and it could potentially be, go ahead and stay here, give yourself a rest and come back and do another isometric hold. For those who can go a little further, draw your knees up and then hang out here. You can pump through your feet a little bit. Haven't gotten to our calves today, right? So go ahead and work on that. Driving the elbows down, filling the lungs. Back side, make it even. And then go ahead and lower down. And I'm gonna have my back to you for just a moment because I wanna explain something really important that has implications for downward facing dog, handstand, forearm balance, et cetera. When we are in a position where our arms are overhead or even just anywhere over shoulder height, so it could be here, could be here, could be here. You want your shoulder blades to lift up 
You do not anatomically want to draw your shoulder blades down your back or toward your spine. And unfortunately, that, is, that was a cue that I heard for a long time and it actually led, in my case, to a shoulder injury, practicing that shoulders back and down, even when my arms were overhead. I thought, um, I thought, oh, maybe I'm not doing it right. I'm not doing it enough, so I would do it more and bam, hurt myself. The anatomy of the shoulder is such that the, you want the socket to face up. You want the shoulder blade to go up. And if you never had any instruction around it, your shoulder blade would naturally go up with the rest of the arm, right? So we're gonna be really, really reaching. And the way that I describe this, so this is gonna come in handy in down dog. It's gonna come in handy in forearm balance, which we'll play with a little bit. We're gonna, I describe it as like that 80s aerobics reach. Get it? That little, little lift here or the picking apples, if you know that from the, the dance. So come back onto your forearms, interlace your fingers maybe in the way that is distinct from the way you did before, so opposite the way you did before. Round your spine, curl your toes, and as you rise up, really experiment with trying to allow your shoulder blades to get closer to your ears, to round around the sides of your rib cage a little bit, this will help fill in your low back and mid back and get you so much stronger, I promise. And then go ahead and slowly lower down and then turn to your side. You're gonna prop yourself up on your forearm on your side and we're gonna do a little bit for our shoulder blade here. Sag your rib cage and draw it up and sag and lift. Building a little bit of strength for your side plank. This is one of the ways, one of the joints that is required. And building this kind of control is really, really powerful. If you feel comfortable, go ahead and press through your knees. You're going to rise up onto your shins here and you're in a kind of a half side plank or modified side plank with the knees down and you can still do the sagging and lifting of your rib cage. You get two more. Let's take it to the other side. Start off with your hips on the ground, drop it down, notice how much you can sag into this and then press it up. If you feel comfortable, go ahead and do the same exact action, but on your knees instead, or maybe even with the legs straight. Building the scapular stability to be able to support your body and to be able to control where it is in space is just essential. Rather than just jumping into side plank without this level of control. Good. And then we're gonna come back to the first side. So before we even get into side plank, I'm gonna teach you something called the Turkish getup. And really what I'm gonna teach you is the first little bit of this and how it associates with some of the yoga stuff that you might be practicing. So the Turkish getup is a classic um, workout move or martial arts move. And it involves rotation of the thoracic spine stability at the shoulder girdle, and so much more. So start with your legs stretched out. You're basically like in Shavasana for starters. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna bend through your right leg, reach your right arm into the sky. And with your left arm, it's gonna go out 45 degrees, but just to the elbow. So you're gonna bend at the elbow, left arm's gonna go 45 degrees out. And all we're gonna do is lean, lift the head, rise up onto your forearm and find this kind of long line from your bottom elbow to your top fist. Very slowly lower yourself right back down. I taught this in my strength class last week and switch sides. Left knee bends, right leg straightens. Left arm reaches to the sky with a punch. Go ahead and protract that arm. Right arm comes out 45 degrees and you're gonna lift your head, rotate. You can use a little bit of momentum here 
and drive down into that arm. Okay, with control, come back down and switch. Reach, elbow, find your way up to your forearm and then find your way all the way to your hand. So you can have, um, you can be posted on your left hand in this case. Come right back down with control, lower, all the way down, switch sides. Beautiful. With control, come on down and then make your way right back up to a side set. Let's play with side plank. Top leg comes forward, root down into the ground, push down into the hand that's on the floor, float your ribs, bottom leg reaches and lift up. So this is a modification of side plank where some of the weight is in your front leg. Float the hips a little bit higher and reach. We'll just do a nice isometric. Super slow, lower it down. Find your way to the other side, top foot in front, post through the hand, drive it down, float it up, float the ribs a little bit higher than you might normally. Breathe. and lower it down. There's so many variations of side plank. I think I even have a blog post on this somewhere on Yoga Anatomy Academy. And we're gonna go right back into the same modification, or if you want, you can have your both like straight, staggered, etc. It's up to you. I'm gonna keep it the same. Root and rise. Full, full breath this time. Option of the arm by the ear. Remember our blanket under the ribs. Lower it down and last side. Drive it down, float it up and sweep. Lift the hips a little more, maybe sweep the arm by the ear. And then lower and find a comfortable seated position. Cross your arms over the chest, drop down through the chin, breathe into the upper back. Let's do some circles here. So inhale up, exhale over and down. Exhale, come on up, over and down. One or two more, just try to Get into all the little nooks and crannies. See if you can make that elbow circle a little bit bigger. And a little bit bigger in the other direction. And then as you are ready, balance everything out. Just release your arms. Roll your shoulders a couple of times. Try to get them as high as you can towards your ears. Going backward and forward. And then there are, are as many ways to close our practice today as you wish. So if you wanna stay seated in meditation, I'm a huge fan of that. If you wanna line your back in a regular Shavasana, I'm a huge fan of that. And I'm also looking to echo some of what we did in the beginning of class where we were belly down. Before we get into it, let's close out with one more thoracic twist. Come onto your back, knees to chest. Have your block nearby so that you don't have to go into an extreme position, right? So you're just gonna keep the knees as high as you can and drop them over and then open up, looking out past your stretched out arm. At least three breaths here. Make your way back to center. 
block to the other side, and then open up. And then slowly finding your way to Shavasana, optional blanket under your knees, or to seated meditation, or to a final shape that takes us into a similar shape that we had in the beginning of the practice. So I'm gonna do a, a little bit of an echo from the beginning of our practice, which uses the blanket roll. And just because I have it, I'm going to use the bolster here, but you don't have to have the bolster and the two blocks. If you do have a bolster, the two blocks, one goes in the medium height, one goes in the low position. And then I'm just re-rolling my blanket to get a nice tight little tootsie roll, placing it here. And I'm going to be in a child's pose over this blanket bolster block combo. Allow your breath to settle down. Make any final adjustments that would feel good to you. Feel the blanket under your abdomen. Notice the breath where it travels. If it's different from your normal breathing, wherever you are, inviting breath into the little nooks and crannies all around your thoracic spine. Allowing your mind to sink into this moment. All of your thoughts settling down like sand in a sand timer. Without any effort, just gently allow your breath to deepen. If you're on your back, notice if you can feel the expansion of your thoracic spine on the, on the floor, the widening of your ribcage. Do you feel more even right to left in the ribcage? Begin to wiggle fingers, wiggle toes. And very gently wake up in a way that feels 
easy and organic to you. If you're on your back, gently draw your knees to your chest. Rock a little side to side. Roll to one side and gently press up to seated. From seated, take one hand to your upper chest, one hand to the side ribs. Breathe in and notice movement. If you got a little bit more movement in both, or a little more ease of movement, a little more diversity of movement. Switch the sides. <laughs> 